Let us stand for the reading of God's Word. Romans chapter 12, I'll read verse 1, we'll read two together, and so on through the chapter. I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Adhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. Not sleuthful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not things, but condescend to men of low estate, be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will replay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Remain standing for prayer, Lord. We thank you that we can overcome evil with good. The world is full of evil. Our hearts are desperately wicked. We're thankful for the grace of God and the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We're thankful, dear Lord, we can be saved and know it. We pray for that lost sinner here in church this morning or that one out in the viewing audience that is lost, that they'll be saved today. We pray a backslider would be reclaimed. We pray, dear Lord, we that are Christians would gain higher ground. Bless now this service. Holy Spirit of God, work in our hearts, we ask in Jesus' name, amen. And you may be seated. What a wonderful passage of Scripture. It's our New Testament reading for today, Romans 12. We read through the Bible uh, uh, in a year. We're in Psalms today, uh, 96, 97, 98, I believe, in the Old Testament, in the Psalms. You get through the Bible in a year, you follow this blue Bible reading chart. I print them 5,000 at a time. I'll send you one if you don't have one. We have them in the back table in our church auditorium. And uh, we read through the Bible together. Many times I preach on the reading for today, which is Romans 12 today. It's a wonderful chapter. The book of Romans is, is wonderful. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that's brothers and sisters in Christ, the Bible or these letters were written to churches. 
This was written to the church at Rome. And it's, uh, uh, many call it the book of Romans, the dynamite of the gospel. The wonderful uh, a chapter, uh, a wonderful book. It says, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, brothers and sisters of Christ, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. What is reasonable as a Christian? Many would say it's reasonable as a Christian to, to go to church on Sunday morning. Well, I'd agree with that, and I'm glad for you that are in church this morning. We have a good crowd here this morning. I'm, I'm thankful for that. Someone that I text to uh, uh, regularly, I text a couple hundred people every morning and pray for those individuals, and, and one of the ones I texted to uh, this morning texted back said in our church this morning the text is Romans 10 1 to 9 I love it I, I texted back that's great and there are various uh, texts being preached on throughout the city of Daytona Beach and throughout Florida and around the country and around the world and our text is here but what is reasonable as a Christian reasonable uh, is it reasonable to be in church? I think so. Uh, is this the way they did it in the New Testament? No, it's not. They met every day in the New Testament. And reasonable Christianity in the Bible was every day. <clears throat> not just on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock or 11 or whatever. And, and uh, We even had it. We had our Sunday school service. Uh, the nine o'clock hour we had it on uh, the Facebook this morning as this is live now or you might see it live or uh, you might see it uh, uh, later if if you if you care to and uh, but it's what is reasonable as a Christian what is reasonable Christianity what is a Christian you know uh, this is something so it says here present your bodies a living sacrifice we don't like to talk about sacrifice today, do we? We, we just don't. Uh, most Christians are very selfish financially. We're getting, a, we're getting some people in our church to learn the meaning of tithing and putting God first. And, and uh, most, most Christians never learn what sacrificial giving is of their money or their time or their life. It says we're supposed to present ourselves a living sacrifice. That involves our financial well-being. That involves our time and energy and everything about us. We're supposed to be a human sacrifice. We're supposed to sacrifice ourselves daily. And uh, that's what it's saying here. I beseech ye that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, and so he wants us to sacrifice ourselves every day. And the Bible says that's reasonable. He wants us all in, and that's reasonable. I'm glad you're here in church today, and I'm glad for uh, the individual that texted me this morning and said that they're, they're uh, evidently the church service uh, that she went to was earlier. And she said the text was Romans 10, verses 1 to 9. I says, good, I love it. That's a good text. But uh, you say, well, is, is that it? That I'm in church today or she went to church somewhere else and others are in church today? Is that it? It's okay, but it's, it's not really that big a deal, actually. Some people think they've really done something if they've gone to church. Now, don't get me wrong, and I don't want you to not come to church, and I'm glad you're here this morning, and I'm glad others are going to church, but it's not really that big a deal. Presenting our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service, that means every area of your life. It means all of your finances. It means your time. It means your love. It means your energy. It means everything the sad thing about it is most Christians, and I'm talking about people that have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and been saved. Listen to me now very carefully. 
The problem is God is way down the list. We've got all kinds of other things separate. There's something I, I, I saw what's important to you today as I was on my way uh, to the church this morning and uh, to come over here for we, we have coffee and donuts at eight o'clock and then we have Sunday school at nine. But then uh, when I was on my way over here, uh, I saw someone riding a bicycle, I guess, for exercise. You know, you see that a lot on Sunday morning. Son will be riding a bike, uh, 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 have one of them speed bikes, you know, and have a helmet on and and uh, uh, one of these racing bike suits on. You know, you ever seen that? You know, they do that on. I seen someone else uh, walking their dog on a Sunday morning as I was on my way to church. I saw another person uh, just walking, exercising, and. Uh, you say are those things well there's none of none of those things I mentioned are bad things to do but um uh it'd be good if more now it is it's not everything to go to church and and uh, we my job as a pastor isn't try to get as many people to church as I can that's okay. I invite people to church and I'm glad you're here today but my goal for you and for the people I reach and for our church member, for Christians in general, that I could encourage people to be a living sacrifice. And that's a whole lot more than showing up on Sunday morning. Most people show up for church on Sunday morning, don't hardly get anything out of it. I've been embarrassed at times when I've talked to someone that I thought was a good Christian and I thought... uh that I'd make conversation and I've seen them later in the day or see them the next day or something uh, and I, I've i engaged them. I don't do it much anymore because I don't want to be embarrassed and I don't want them to be embarrassed. Uh, but I'll ask them uh, a pointed question about uh, what did you think of the sermon? Now, I'm talking about people. I'm not talking about someone that was sleeping during the service. Let me look around here. Got one guy sleeping over here on the left. Carmen, give him a poke. Wake him up. Wake him up. Yeah, we're having church. Amen. I asked her to poke you and wake you up. Who else? I got another guy over here sleeping. Wake him up. There you go. There you go. All right. We're having church. I don't mind. I don't mind people sleep when they come in there on Sunday morning. But I allow you to sleep when we're eating, not during the preaching. Amen. So I had two. That wasn't too bad. Just two. Had a pretty good crowd here this morning. Two sleeping. It could have been worse. Amen. <laughs> but I wouldn't engage neither one of these later in the day and ask them what they thought of the sermon because they off in La La Land. And I, I might have walked up. No, he trying to find a sleep. Now, he might have been up all night. I don't know. I used to fall asleep in church, you know, before I was saved. I slept regular. My wife always, you know, that we'd go, she, she'd drag me to church. She'd let's go to church. I'd okay, we go to church. And I'd go there, you know. I, I'd, I'd embarrass her because uh, other people in church would hear me snoring. Or if I wasn't snoring, she'd have to give me the elbow, you know, and wake me up. But I'm talking about people that were in church and I thought were good Christians and were doing okay. And uh, I'd say, well, what would you think of the sermon this morning if I talked to them in the afternoon? They might even come back to the evening service. They didn't have a clue what I preached about. Maybe like some of you that are here this morning, you ain't getting it. Or, Well, usually out there like on Facebook, if, uh, I mean, you usually gonna, if you go watch it on the Facebook, you usually kind of pay attention unless you'd be watching cartoons or whatever. You know, you wouldn't you wouldn't be putting it up there. Usually, people that watch on the internet, they they're gonna listen. They unless someone forced you to watch it or something, or you're playing a game. But there are many people that they don't even listen to preaching. They don't. Uh, so, and even if you do, you need more than listening to the preaching on Sunday morning or or on the YouTube or on the television or whatever. You need to be in touch with God. A living sacrifice is someone that's in touch with God and abides in Christ on a daily basis. Do you understand? On a daily basis. Regularly. 
Verse 2, look at here. Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world. What's it mean to be conformed to this world? It means to be a worldly Christian. You live like the world. You walk You walk the way the world does. You talk like the world. You go where it does. You, you drink beer with the world. You watch worldly television. You go to the uh, filthy Hollywood movies. Uh, uh, you're a worldly Christian. Most most saved people are worldly Christians. I mean, I've just I've decided that after 40 years of preaching, I've decided that the majority of Christians are worldly Christians. If you can drag them to church once a month or once a week, you're doing good. But they're not. They they they're not. They don't have a life that is a, a sacrificial life. They have a life that is a, a, a selfish life. And they have a life that is conformed to this world. You understand? But here in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. You see, a saved person is supposed to be a transformed person. A saved person is to be different. It's not the same old, same old. It's not the same old partying. It's not the same old lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life. That's not what a Christian should be all about if you're really saved. I don't know if you're saved or not. There's only one person in this building that I know is saved for sure, and that's me. I know I'm saved. I think some others are saved here. I think some others out there in the viewing audience are saved. But now, if you've been transformed and you're not conforming to the world but been transformed by the renewing of your mind, you see, my mind isn't right. We think wrong by nature. Do you understand that? I naturally think wrong. I naturally think wrong thoughts. You understand? And so do you. Doesn't it shock you to death sometimes that some things you... Does it surprise you sometime with the wickedness of your thought life that comes up? Has something done that? In regards to hatred or evil thoughts or that? Is ever... I mean, has it ever... Have you ever just all of a sudden said, Wow! Woo! What is that all about? Now, Evelyn don't know what I'm thinking about. And I don't know what Evelyn's thinking about. But God knows what we're thinking about, Evelyn. You understand? God knows what we're thinking about. Did you ever try to fool someone, fool your husband or fool your wife or fool your kids or fool your mom or dad? Or, or, or you try to fool someone... And you might trick them, and you might be pretty slick, and you might pull it over on them, but we never pull anything over on God, do we? Sometimes when I'm pulling over on someone, like you do, and we all try to do it sometime, it'll just hit me. Man, you're so stupid. Why are you trying to pull it over on someone when you got answer to God? You ain't pulling nothing over on God. Huh? I had some people pull stuff over over on me that that I never knew, but they never did. They didn't pull it over on God. I've I've had people that have been part of my ministry that I trusted and and everything, and and I thought they were faithful and doing right, and and uh, when the truth of the matter come in, they were they were uh, dreadfully deceitful and doing evil things. They pulled it over on me. Finally got caught in it. But they never pulled anything over on God. You don't pull anything over on God either. You know that? And you out there in the viewing audience, you never pull anything over on God. By the renewing of your mind, get your mind in sync with God. Let the Holy Spirit, capital S, I'll make a big capital S on the, out on there in the Internet, not little s, not little s us, but capital S, Holy Spirit, controlling our spirit 
and then our minds can be renewed because what I think is what I am. And when, I, when I'm saved and I follow Christ, I can walk in the Spirit. Amen? And I'll not fulfill the lusts and desires of the flesh. Too often you and I walk in the flesh and not in the Spirit. Am I telling the truth or not? Come on now. Am I telling the truth, church? Yes, I am. And you out there in the viewing audience too. That ye may prove, prove, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? That's what I want in my life. Well, where, where do you find what is good and acceptable and perfect? In the Bible. In the Bible. Why do I want you to read the Bible? Why do I give you these, these Bible reading charts that I print by the thousands and pass them out? If you need one in the viewing audience, send it. I'll send you one in the mail. Come into church. I got them on the back table. Yes, we want the good and acceptable and perfect will of God and it'll only be found in the Bible. It'll only come from God. And it's what we need to do. Yeah. Oh my. So uh, that's what we need. We, we need the perfect will of God. We need that uh, which is good. This Romans 12, I'll probably preach on it for a few days. I'm going to preach on it tonight again. We haven't got far. We just got to the first two verses. There's so much more in here, and it's so rich. I don't want to just skim over it and and uh, throw a bunch of thoughts at to you and and miss with half of them. If we can just think for a moment on these great truths here found in verse one and two, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, that save people. By the mercies of God that we present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You see, God expects us to live a holy life. God, we can live a holy life. You say, I can. I talk to people every day. There's people right here in church today that tell me all the time. They make an excuse. Ma'am, you need to sit down now. Just sit down. You've been getting up and down like a jack-in-the-box. Well, you've been using it three or four times. This is church. All right. Well, hurry up. Hurry up now. You're distracting people. We're having church. I know it's your first. Oh, yeah, I all know you're here. Yeah. We don't need to see you traipsing in and out. I've been, in, I've been going to church for uh, 48 years. Ma'am, you be quiet or you're going to leave now. You're not that absurd, Okay. Ma'am, you're going to leave. You won't run your mouth anymore. At least your boyfriend sit there and be quiet. He might be sleeping. I'm not sure. I've been in church. I've been saved 48 years. I've been going to church. I never had to get out and go to the bathroom all that time. And by the way, uh, I've had prostate trouble and, and have had kidney problems and that and had a prostate operation and everything. And, and uh, uh, some people just like to wander in and out and go to the toilet when we're having church. I don't like going to the toilet when we, we got church. I like having church. Amen? Amen? I try to be real dignified and everything. Sorry about that, folks out there on Facebook, but it's just the way we do things around here. I tell the people, be dignified now. We're going to be on the internet. I want to help you. That lady needs help. First time here. She needs help. She needs God. Wandering in and out of the toilet ain't going to get you to God. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> holy, acceptable unto God. It's reasonable. God wants us to live holy. God wants us to be what we ought to be, living a holy life, born again, have the Holy Ghost in us. Amen? Are you saved? Have you been saved? I'm saved. April 4th, 1969. I hope you've been saved. I hope you've been saved. If you haven't, you need to get saved today. Amen? Born again. The Bible says ye must be born again. Ye must be born again. Oh, my. I hope you're born again. If you're not, you need to be today. 
The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. I'm saved. I hope you're saved today. We've got new folks here today, and and we're always glad for new folks, and people get saved here on a regular basis. And you know, I'm glad I'm saved, and I'm glad there's others here that are saved, but if you've never been saved, you need to get saved today. If you're out there in the... Uh, in the viewing audience if you're not saved you need to get saved today praise God Romans 12 we just got the two verses this morning we'll get to more tonight be sure to mark it down and you that are out there in the viewing audience if uh, if you've seen it call someone they can watch this later you that are here in church today you can tell someone about it they can see it on Facebook later we'll be live tonight about 6 o'clock too so, uh, are you saved? Are you saved? That's the big deal. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that for these that have come to church. Thank you. New ones today. We usually have new folks. That's good. You say, preacher, here in, the, here in, I'm the only one looking around in church. You say, preacher. I'm saved. I know I'm going to heaven. I've been born again. I'm a born again Christian and I know it. Would you slip your hand up? Slip it up high. Let me see your hands. Many hands raised, but there's a number of you folks can't raise your hand. Let me put your hands down. I'm thankful for these that are saved. My hand is raised with that bunch. How about out there in the listening audience, the viewing audience? You raise your hand. I can't see your hand. But you say, I'm saved, preacher. I'm glad you are. I believe there's many out there in the viewing audience that don't know they're saved either. The Bible says you must be born again. Oh, yes, you must be born again. You're here in the church today. You say, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven, but I want you to pray for me. I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. I need you to pray for me. Would you slip your hand up? Raise it up high. Raise it up high. Raise it up high. We have five hands raised. God bless you. May put your hands down. We have five hands raised in our auditorium. People asking prayer for salvation. I'm going to pray for them in a moment. How about you? I can't see your hand out there in the viewing audience, but you know you're not saved and you need prayer. I'm going to pray for you. You know you're not saved and you need prayer. I'm going to pray for you. Let's pray for these. Lord, we pray for these five in our congregation here today in our midst praying for salvation they're not sure they're saved I'd ask dear Lord that you would show them through the power of the Holy Ghost show them through the power of the Holy Ghost that they can repent and the Bible says if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved and the Bible says in Romans 10, 13, whosoever, anybody and everybody, free gift, available for everyone, not just an elected few, but for everybody. You five that have raised your hands today, God has spoke to your heart. All you have to do now is call upon him and repent and say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. Would you trust in Jesus Christ right now and be saved? Pray this prayer with me right now in your heart. Lord, be merciful to me and save me. I believe you died for me and shed your blood and rose from the grave. Thank you for saving me right now. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed here in the church auditorium. You say, I prayed that prayer today and I meant it in my heart. Would you slip your hand up? Just raise it up high. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. God bless you. God bless you. Lord, we thank you for these four. We thank you for these four that have received Christ this morning. I'm thankful for these out in the viewing audience. You out in the viewing audience, I pray that you'd contact us somehow and let us know of your decision and we can help you further with the Bible or with encouragement. 
We're so thankful that whosoever should call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Bless now. We thank you, dear Lord, for the food you prepare for us. Bless our meal together. Bless our fellowship. And especially bless these that haven't been saved yet here in the church and those out there in the viewing audience that they could find Christ soon. And I pray you've reclaimed the backslider today that hasn't been living right. The Bible says, 1 John 1, 8, If we say that we have no sin, we lie, and the truth is not in us. And 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins as Christians, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dear Christian friend here in church and out in the viewing audience, we must daily confess our sins as Christians and get right with God to regain fellowship. Thank you for these saved today. Thank you for the food. Thank you for our fellowship. Bless now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless each one of you. We're glad you came to church today, and we're glad you viewed out there on the Internet. We'll be on this evening at 6 again.